Hello everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Today's Woodblock Wednesday is um, focused on one artist working, uh, he's considered uh, a contemporary Woodblock print artist, though he started his career um, sort of in, in the Sosaku Hanga genre, um, but we'll, we'll discuss all of those particularities in, in just a moment. But um, I want to introduce this artist. Uh, his name is Joichi Hoshi. Many of you are familiar with him as the artist of trees. And in fact, I have two wonderful examples of woodblock prints designed um, depicting trees and um well without further ado let's go to the table have a look at what i have and discuss them in depth so i'm going to step back a little bit so you could see the table you could see a little preview um, as i grab my cheat sheet and we'll, we'll start with this print here as i briefly uh sketch out uh joichi hoshi's career um he was born in 1913, and he passed away in 1979. And as I mentioned, um, Joichi Hoshi started with black printmaking sort of out of the Sosaku Hanga tradition. And what I mean by that is his career started in the late 40s, early 50s. He was making works of somewhat, they're, they're kind of abstract designs. Although you can argue they're also representational, they're sort of ambiguous, but he started with, with making designs of stars. And of course there are some early woodblock prints from the early 30s that are portraits and landscapes. Um, they're very rare, but generally speaking, he started his career making woodblock prints of constellations in the night sky. And they were quite striking. But then he moved on to the subject of trees. And that's where his popularity really um, caught on. And people loved his tree designs. Um, and I, I see, I, I mean, with the two examples I brought today can show you exactly why he's so known for his tree designs. They're just stunning works. Um, but before we go to the to the uh, the prints themselves you know, you know the other things i want to say about hoshi is that hoshi pioneered um a, quite a few methods in making prints but particularly he's known for using metallic pigments like uh, other contemporary artists such as nakayama um, but he used them in different ways to to highlight natural elements in his composition which is you know really clever but also quite um, striking and realistic in many cases um, and I have two examples here where uh, you could see that quite well so uh, moving to the works I have in, um, to present to you today this particular print is called morning it's from 1973 it's an edition of 88 prints and this design or this impression is two out of 88 and what we have here is a a beautiful grouping of three four trees uh, that sort of come together whose branches are interlaced and make one really beautiful silhouette of a tree one large tree although really there there's four here and um what you see here is in the background in the background of the entire design there's a beautiful gold metallic pigment that's been applied onto the surface of the uh, the the print and what that does is that it warms the background and creates a wonderful dramatic sense of light and what we have here is a quite a vivid experience of morning light coming through the trees and, and also serving sort of the, to, to lighten or, or capture light throughout the composition. So I'm going to move the camera over so you could see how wonderful his use of light is. You, I mean, he basically captures the light by adding that mica. 
um, or a, a gold metallic. It's not really mica. I take that back. It's a gold metallic pigment that's applied quite carefully in the background. And one thing I want to point out is that the registration for this print is astonishing. So if you look at all of those branches, you don't have any of the pigment running beyond the the lines of the branches. The blue pigment he used is well within the composition or part of the 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 design of the tree. But then he adds this gold background and it is precise in its application around the branches and the tree trunks. I mean, the, the, the precision that you need to apply that uh, gold metallic pigment is astonishing. So his wood blocks had to have been cut very finely, but very accurately so that the registration uh, lined up perfectly. Um, and you, you could, I mean, you could just kind of see how wonderful the gold runs through the background. I mean, I just think that's quite astonishing. I should also point out that in the background, it's not one unified tone of gold. There is a varying, varying degree of, of, of light and dark throughout the gold. There's areas where the gold gets darker, and then there's areas where it go, gold gets lighter. And that's um, a combination of how thickly applied the pigment is to the block and then onto the print but also the way that the block itself is carved. So I, th I think that's quite noteworthy. It's, it's, um, it's, it's easy to see a design like this and just be entranced by the design and the beauty of it, but the intricateness of the work that went into creating this composition is really astonishing. Um, and, and so we see in this composition, at least, we see Hoshi's fascination with trees, and he really captures this sort of this magical moment of dawn as it as it arrives, and then the light sort of filters through. Now, I have another work. Well, you know, I'm going to zoom in one last time so you could see. Here's a tree in the background in silhouette, also done in blue. But then there's these wonderful lines that he's carved out that sort of suggests kind of a fog that's lifting up above from the, the ground and as the light sort of burns the fog away. I should say that uh, Hoshi, utilizing this gold pigment, he's not the first one to do that. I mean, obviously, as I said, Nakayama, contemporary of his, was also doing that. But they're really borrowing from a tradition in J a Japanese history, in art history, um, that goes back centuries. The Rimpa school has utilized silver and gold um, for their screens and for paintings. And so Hoshi really is building upon a tradition that's been well established in Japanese art, but he's using it in a very novel way in wood block prints, particularly in how carefully carved his blocks are and how the pigment um, works with the metallics. Uh, I, I think he's a master at that. And of course, he's using the gold metallic pigment not just as a means of, um, as an or ornamentation within the composition. It's also something that's quite useful. It echoes the reality of light coming through, um, you know, a landscape like this. So, as as striking and imaginative, imaginative, I can't speak today for some reason, uh, of his his work is here. It's also quite realistic. Uh, though trees don't appear blue completely, they, it does have a sense of twilight or dawn, and and that light that's filtering through the composition. Um, I mean, I I think it's quite realistic, um, despite the fact that. 
it's highly ornate but um but i'll leave you guys to decide for yourself on that I mean, I could look at the, this this all day. It's just so striking. And the light I have here in my, um, well, I usually use this as my print viewing room, though it is my dining room. Um, the light here is perfect. There's a, a soft light overhead that really uh, brings out the metallics. So now it, the next composition I have here, the next print, is um, a forest design and let me get my notes let's see it's called in the forest and this is the gold version there's two versions he, he did and the second version has silver in the background and it gives a completely different effect now i want to back up a little bit um i do film my videos upright um, some people have complained that they rather see them in horizontal format but a lot a lot more people are looking at these videos with their phone and it's much easier to look at this video with your phone in ver a vertical format so i'm going to keep it in in a vertical format for now um but I, i'll back up so you can see the entire composition but what we have here is a densely uh, populated forest with tons of tree trunks throughout the composition there's some larger ones in the foreground and in the background there's just you know hundreds really but what we have in the in the background also is a gold metallic um pigment that captures a sense of light that is dying that is just barely clinging to the to to the growing night and I mean, I'm going to zoom in so you could see. You could see the trees and how intricate the design is, how Hoshi carved out all of the trees in the background. But that gold comes right through. And like in this composition, it really does serve to illuminate the composition and it adds this wonderful sense of light. Now, the, the gold that he used in this design is not the same um, as in this composition. It does not shine as bright, which is fantastic. This almost looks photographic, to be quite honest. You look at this, and it looks like a photo of a, of a forest. It really has this mood. Like It's almost like... Uh, I mean, if you when I think of the idea of an enchanted forest, this design pops in my mind. I mean, you really get a sense of magic. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Now, this design is a very subdued work. You see it illustrated in a catalog, and I'll talk about the catalogs in just a moment. Um, but it's one of those designs that you could flip through the catalog and just go, oh yeah, it's a forest, and you move on to the next thing. But when you have this print in person, oh, wow, it is so different. It, it is Actually, this design is one of my favorites because it's so subdued in terms of, of its... It doesn't command immediate attention when you see it in a book or even in a quick glance. But when you give this print a moment, it really opens up into a world of its own. And that, that's really why I love this design. I, I do hope that that comes across in the video and also how intricate the carving is on these compositions. I don't think Hoshi gets his due as a woodblock print um, artisan in the sense that he carved his own blocks and he printed his own designs in the Sosaku Hanga sort of tradition. But generally speaking, so the Sosaku Hanga movement kind of died when Onchi passed away or shortly thereafter. And these prints being produced in the 70s um, and, and, and so on, both of them are from the 70s, these really belong to a contemporary art movement. 
um, that is not just a Japanese art movement, but a contemporary art movement that is more global. And so I don't consider Hoshi, Nakayama, Yoshitoshi Mori, and other contemporary artists like Maki, um, or even Shinoda as Sosaku Hanga artists, though they were making all their own prints and producing their work themselves, with the exception of Shinoda, she had a printer. But these prints were produced in the same exact manner as Sosaku Hanga prints. Um, and so, you know, because of that, I think, you know, these artists really deserve their due in, in terms of the skill that um, was required to produce them. So I'm going to zoom in on both of them one last time. And these, of course, these two prints are also on my website, and there's plenty of information on there about these two, uh, as well as there's others on my site. Now, I want to point out there's there's several books on Hoshi, but there's three main ones. Uh, there's a couple more, but for today's uh, purposes, I brought up the two self-cover books that mo you might see uh, here and there. They, they come up for sale. I actually have all three available for sale on my website, but the, these two basically compose his catalog resume. They, with these two books, you pretty much have his entire body of work. They're not complete, but it is as complete as you can get. And this hardcover book has a wonderful slipcase. This uh, book is it's a really stunning coffee table book with color photographs showing uh, a lot of the prints uh, in full color. These are, the images are smaller. Yes, many of them are in color. The vast majority are in color, but they're not really art coffee table books. They're more useful for the collector that wants to see the artist's body of work, have the appropriate titles translated in English, the dates, and so on. So these are books that are really valuable. So if you're interested in, to, if you're interested in learning more about Hoshi, these are the books you should uh, pay attention to, particularly these two. And if you want a really nice, fine coffee table book, that's the book to get. Um, and of course, these, these books are a fraction of the cost of the prints. So if you're, if you can't purchase a, a print, um, right now, it's always better to buy the books anyway. So you get a sense of what you like, and then you can find the, the prints. So I'll zoom in one last time. Such a striking design. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on today's conversation of Woodblock Wednesday. We featured the work of Joichi Hoshi and two fine woodblock prints of featuring designs of trees. Um, next week is a travel week for me. I'm going to New York. There's an opening for the Meiji Modern Exhibition, an exhibition dedicated to all artwork for the from the Meiji period. I actually am loaning a piece from my uh, own collection for the exhibition. It starts next week in New York. The exhibition will be held there for a month or two, not, probably longer than that. I don't have the dates, but then it travels. Um, actually, it'll be more than a couple of months, but um, it travels to Chicago and then also to Houston. So if you're in those cities, you should look up the exhibition and, and invite all of you to check it out. Um, but because I'll be away, I might be able to do a Woodblock Wednesday with either a collector or at the exhibition itself. We'll see what I can do. Um, otherwise, uh, you might not see me if I had some dif if I have difficulties filming. Um, I might take a week off and then come back the following week. But I'm hoping that I can put something together next week. So there's something to look forward to possibly. Um, and then you know I, I want to point this out. I, I I don't think I've mentioned this in my uh, previous um, woodblock lenses, but I'm always interested in Japanese woodblock prints. So if you have prints that you're interested in selling, I'd be happy to take a look 
contact me. Um, and of course, I have a website dedicated to prints and paintings. Please check it out, collecting Japanese, Japanese, collecting Japanese prints.com. I also have a bookstore with a number of books that you might find helpful, so you should check that out as well. I want to thank all of you for joining me and those who are watching on YouTube. Thanks for joining. I had a all of my Woodblock Wednesdays are uploaded onto YouTube. You could, uh, they're cataloged there, but you could also easily look through the categories of all of the Woodblock Wednesdays on my website, so check it out. And I look forward to seeing you on our next installment of Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, thank you.